Prepare to go deep into the power of understanding. I mean, really understanding your target customer. It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello and welcome. It is great to have you here and we've got a cracking interview coming up for you very shortly. Today's guest is one of you guys. She's one of our listeners and it's always awesome to get to catch up with one of the listeners. So if one of you, if you, as you're listening, if you want to come and be a guest on this podcast and chat to me about your business, then just head to ecmp.info forward slash guest where you'll find the details of how to apply. And it would be awesome to chat to you. I love chatting to our own listeners. It's always very cool to get to bring you on the show. Now, in today's episode, we're talking to a very clever tech startup. Um, I challenge you to get to the end of this as a podcast listener and not want a pair of their product. I'm just going to warn you that in advance. Uh, The story is very, very cool. How they've gone about building the business and growing the business is very interesting. We're talking about the ins and outs of their startup journey, as well as getting deep into kind of understanding why it's been so important for them to fully understand who their customer really is and what that's built to their journey thus far. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this chat, so I hope you do too. And please make sure you listen to the end of the episode so you don't miss out on my guest's top tips, which are excellent, and my own take on this episode. Getting an online business off the ground is not easy. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember, great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. It's the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Once you set up a free Klaviyo account, you can start sending beautiful branded messages in minutes, thanks to drag and drop design templates and built-in guidance. And with e-commerce specific recommendations and insights, you can keep growing your business as you go. Get started with a free account at clavio.com forward slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. And now to introduce today's special guest. Shay Gerhard is the inventor, founder and CEO of Butterflies, an innovative and strategic earbud brand. Based in the USA, they're selling exclusively D2C via their Shopify store to the USA only at the moment. Founded in 2016, they started selling in 2021 and did nearly $500,000 in their first four months of marketing, including unfortunately going out of stock multiple times. Hello, Shay. Hi, Chloe. It's nice to see you. Uh, I'm like to see you and hear you, I guess. <laughs> well, it's very cool to have you here on the show uh, with such an innovative product, which is always a word I struggle with. Um, how did you end up in the world of e-commerce? So, I mean, early on, I started, I thought for sure I was going to be an attorney and then went to school. My final class in college, I guess, it was uh, constitutional law, which in the US is the most boring class on earth, or was for me. <clears throat> so I switched to business and went to business school. And during business, I just figured out that my mind works in this space the best in the and the marketing space. And so went down that path. I worked early on at TBW, TBWA Shiat, which is one of the biggest advertising agencies in the world. And I wasn't creative. I was brand strategy and go-to-market strategy. And from there, I spent most of my career in executive roles, but creating disruptive products in big industries and going in and finding a path to, to cut through the clutter um, and grow business, grow our businesses. Um, and about six years ago, I decided to start my own business because we had an incredible idea and grow my own business. So that's where I am today. So it was, you weren't looking for an idea. The idea just um, hit you. And then you you realized everything you'd learned thus far, you could apply to something for yourself. Yeah. I mean, there's a mix. I, I sort of am an inventor. I always think there's a better way to do something unless there isn't. Right. But finding better paths and better ways to do things. So I have a bunch of inventions. This one was one of the inventions and a, 
and I'll tell you about six year ago, years ago, we're in Colorado and my husband, we have three little boys and my husband was like, Hey, it's a powder day tomorrow. You want to go skiing. And from where we are, it takes about two hours to get to the mountains. If you leave at 5 a.m. in the morning, otherwise it takes a really like five hours because there's so much traffic. <laughs> so I was super anxious that I wouldn't be able to wake up and I'd miss that window. I fell asleep with the Apple wired AirPods um, with, with them in my ear. And I woke up with that crazy aching pain you get in your ears. And prior to that, I listened to a ton of audiobooks and podcasts. So I'd spent a lot of times like talking to my friends like, hey, have you read, listened to this podcast? It's awesome or whatever. Um, and people be like, I can't listen to earbuds that long. It's, they hurt my ears. I didn't actually have that problem until that night. So that morning I woke up and that those AirPods have a seam on them. So I cut open the seam in the morning because I couldn't imagine skiing without listening to them all day, but cut them open, put the components into my kids' swimmer's wax and wore them all day underneath my ski helmet. It was super comfortable. And the sound environment was so much cleaner than the actual experience with those earbuds. So I had, it sort of came out of necessity is the invention. So, but we went down the road to make sure. So and the next Monday I went in and my CFO was a good friend of mine. And I was like, Hey, listen to what I invented this weekend, but I invent things all the time. He's like, all right, whatever. <laughs> He's like, this, this um, has to exist. Nothing like it existed on the market. His wife is one of the top patent attorneys in our area. So he's like, let's patent it. And I was like, first, let's make sure this is a big enough issue. So it turns out 87% of people who use earbuds get ear fatigue, soreness, um, or they fall out. So fit and comfort are the number one complaint, top complaint in the industry. Plus, it's also a huge industry. So it's a Today, it's a $30 billion industry. They're projecting in a few years, it's going to be a $152 billion industry. So the growth is enormous. And within that industry, it's important to understand who the players are and can, is there room to break into it. And so we really focused on, you know, the biggest market share holder in the space is Apple, and they only own 34% of the market. I think Sony is next at like 12%. And so there's a ton of room in the space and there's not been a ton of innovation in the last 14 years. So pretty much all earbuds are made with that hard plastic clamshell design with that little, sometimes they have that little rubber ear foam ear tip on the end. But still with that, the number one complaint is ear fatigue and soreness. And that's because the human ear is constantly moving when you talk exercise, chew. So we set out to, to build an earbud that actually flexes with your ear, works with your body temperature so it gets more comfortable over time and so that you can comfortably wear it as long as you want to. And I have to say one of the things you haven't, you haven't mentioned, but which is I got like in-ear buds and was like, this is so cool. I could listen to them on the train without the wire getting in the way. And then one of them fell out whilst I was eating my lunch on the train. And I was just scrabbling around underneath people's feet, which you just don't want to be doing on a train, trying to find it. And the reason I bring that up is because you have a tether on yours, which I think is the most exciting thing. Because Could you explain a little bit about that? And then we'll go on and start talking about some marketing and things. Yes. First, I will say I have a bunch of friends in New York who've sent me signs that says, there's a bunch of signs on the subway that said, don't jump into the tracks to get your earbud because you'll die. <laughs> so this is a big issue. They fall out all the time. It's a good business model for, for those guys because every six months we're repurchasing earbuds. And not only does it fall out, but it also gets lost in the washing machine or gets run over by your car or whatever the case is. Leave it on the airplane. So the reason we went with a tether was because it can provide nine and a half of full battery, full usage experience with 33 hours of idle. The wireless, true wireless ones that don't have a tether can only go about two hours maximum full usage. Then you have to put them back into, put them away. You can stop, have to stop using them and put them into the wireless charging case. So we did it because we were focused on our consumer um, and our target audience. But I have to say like, since we've launched and you know, you never know until you launch and get on the market, people write us all the time. Like, I love the tether. It's always, I love that I can have it always around my neck, super accessible anytime I need to do it. But then I'm also not rude when I'm like talking to people and have to hold it, hold them in my hand. I can just drop around my neck. So it's really cool then to understand that use case, which was not originally why we did it. Oh, 
Oh, cool. So it was, it was for the electrical connection, basically. And then the everyone's gone, no, this is brilliant. I need them attached to me at all times. It's very cool. Um, I, I love how you've how you've been I mean you know your your past experience rings true as you're telling that story you know I've got an idea I completely understand the consumer I've done the research I can see the market you know the market gap that there is here um how did obviously though you know there were quite a lot of years of of getting the product together the ideas and and um you know getting it fit for market how did you how did you decide that D to C, I guess, first off, was the route you were going to take with this and not, you know, going and, and, you know, licensing to one of the big existing brands or selling via uh, existing retailers? Why was D to C the route you chose? I mean, that's such an interesting question because there is a lot of options we have, right? So licensing, white labeling are huge in this space. I mean, for instance, Samsung has the most amount of cell phone owns the market share for cell phones in the world. They don't really have an earbud that, that is speaking to people right now. If they had this, this would be a game changer for them, right? Um, so that would be a huge play. The other thing that we also considered pretty heavily when we were deciding our market path was the hearing aid industry um, has ne- you know, recently just came out that you can sell hearing aids over the counter where it used to be you had to go through a doctor, at least within the U.S. Um, And that's a huge industry because the greatest hearing loss is for males between the ages of 45 and 55. But there's such a stigma around the ear ear, uh, hearing aid that no one wants to wear it, right? So having a D2C brand that came out and really was cool to wear, you know, sort of had that didn't have any stigma associated with it, but very comfortable long term. That was one of our visions. It still is sort of long term vision because a lot of the hearing assistance capabilities is built into our earbuds. But we did decide ultimately to go to the D2C path and build a brand, even when some of the most popular brands in the world are in this space, because we saw a path that we could could go that would really emotionally connect with people in a space that has sort of been a commodity to this point. But also, even if we did white label deals or licensing deals in the future, there's already an established understanding that this is a cool thing to have part of your earbuds or your experience. I mean, we've had military and call centers, huge call centers approach us and ask for that kind of deal, which is also interesting. But at this point, we're sort of just making sure we can, everything we do match it, works with our brand and our target audience and fits their lifestyle. I suppose it, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because it doesn't, there's nothing about going to DCC that stops you from exploring any opportunity. And, and as you've already seen, it allows other things you hadn't even considered to crawl out of the woodwork, like call centres and military. Yeah, It's like... They're not going to be on the whiteboard on day one. I mean, right, we've got the patent. What are we going to do? Well, let's go for the military. It's not, it's not an obvious, yeah. an obvious route. So it puts you in control, and I guess it, it also means that, that you're building the use case. You're building the proof that would make a licensing deal more attractive or a wholesaling deal more attractive yeah. because there's, there's something else there. Yeah, and I mean, it's sort of that Intel inside model, right? I mean. Intel did it differently. They went with the Intel inside model as a B2B um, experience, but making that sort of the butterflies inside experience has huge potential and opportunity for us in the future um, while we still maintain the D2C brand. And as I I mentioned earlier, you currently, or you've so far, you've had some issues with going out of stock a few times, which is a lot easier to handle when you're a D2C business yourself than when you're wholesaling or you're you're going down other routes I, I would assume that as you as you figure out those restrictions it's it's going to be easier being a d2c brand than, than doing something else yeah I mean a little bit that wasn't quite as deliberate I mean we started as I told you you know three it took us almost three and a half years to develop the product there's nothing like this exists in, in the space where we have a continually squishy or moldable earbud that flexes with a human ear, which takes a very complicated um, material composition. Um, And so we wanted to, once we figured that out, we were able to, we launched, 
we've done a ton of tests beforehand. So bot media, tested price points, tested messaging, tested value proposition hierarchies. Um, and so we sort of had a good sense of it, but until you get into someone's hand, you don't quite know. So we did spend a few months just working through the kinks. Once we started, once we launched mar uh, marketing, which we only launched in November of last year, it just took off. I mean, it, it wasn't, I mean, it's such a cool experience when you have been thinking about something for five years and working your tail off to get it done and really deliver for the customer. And then to have them just be so delighted with it was awesome. The one thing I didn't do is anticipate the, the level of demand, which is one of the harder things, right? Like who knows the demand, you know, that's a hard thing to, to measure prior to launch. And our demand just took off. We actually, you know, pulled back on marketing, we raised the price point $100 and demand went up, which doesn't happen wow. in the consumer electronics space. And so we sort of know we've got onto something big, but we are in the middle of switching right now a to a much larger and more sophisticated manufacturer. We were with, with more of a prototyping manufacturer before. Um, and our new manufacturer can get up to 50,000 units a month. So that's rolling out this week um, in a prep for holiday. Mm -hmm. I should say for every, anyone listening, I know you guys are listening to this in uh, November. We're recording this in August, so don't worry. Shay isn't doing her prep for Christmas in November. She is well ahead of the game with that that uh, that bigger capacity warehouse. So yeah, I mean that's why we we did it. We you know have every intention of going to Europe, going uh, outside of the U.S. and going into wholesales wholesalers. We just can't get enough inventory in right now. Once we do, we will cover all those aspects of it. We have all the certifications and so forth to, to expand. And so we're ready to go. We just need the inventory. So you've ramped up the inventory ready for, for a big end to 2022. What does your team look like? Now you've got past kind of the R&D stages. What's, what's kind of the business as usual or the business growth team looking like? So, I mean, I have been so lucky. I have the most incredible team. For us, we really wanted to focus on those core aspects of growth that we needed. So I have an amazing COO who handles all product and manufacturing and, and logistics. I have an amazing person who's doing all of our customer service and fulfillment and logistics on that side of stuff. And she's just incredible in how she runs her team and delighting customers every day. And then I have an acquisition team that has just been just impressive, incredibly impressive in digital marketing and pod, in our, you know, sort of media mix. And then the brand work we've done internally, mostly the brand work, but um, we'll probably level it up here in a little bit and, and see what outside thinking can do for us um, and how much we can get out of that. And you mentioned that the brand is is in turn being done internally. The acquisition and the the um, fulfillment side of things. Have you and the customer services are those things you're doing in house, or are they external? They they outsourced. I mean, we have the internal person running the the outsourcing teams, but we have an internal. But we all of those are internal roles. Excellent. And I thought something else I wanted just to dive down into was your definition of the marketplace, because I think every business, certainly in my in my own business experience, zoning in on a target customer is, is quite tricky. And I think a lot of us would go, the earphones market, the earbuds market, how on earth do you segment that? But you, you got really clear on exactly who the listener, you know, who your, who your target customer was. Now, was that more for who you wanted the product to be for? Did you kind of come up with the avatar and then find them? Or did you look at, has it evolved as you've looked at who's been buying it? I guess, was it the the cart before the horse or the other way around? I mean, we looked at the problem that we're solving and how, how many people are affected by this problem. And is this a pain point that people are willing to pay for, right? So that was our number one approach. As I mentioned earlier, 87% of the market is affected by this achy, uncomfortable ears falling out with the earbud space. Even with the headphone, the cans that sort of push on your ears, you get that little achy in your, in your um, cartilage. When we started backing out who is the customer that is the most affected by this, like, cause you're not going to, no 
startup is going to want to enter the market addressing 87% of the market because you're going to get lost in the shuffle. You're going to lose your messaging. Um, and so we needed to narrow that down to find really those who could be our who would be our best customers, who would get the most out of this experience in our value proposition, but who also would be our evangelists in the future, right? And that's why people who listen to audiobooks and podcasts, we really started to focus in. Like they, you know, again, like I said, they love music, but you know that moment when you get like 20 minutes to yourself, which I actually did, I do for your podcast, which I love, and you just get to go on a walk and no one else is around and your sort of world drops away and you get that feeling where you're like, I love learning. I love how, what's happening to my head where, where I'm getting a different perspective or I'm getting new insight or nuggets of knowledge. So building upon that is our brand essence and then focusing on this target market. So and is how we sort of refined it. It's still a pretty like, you know, we're 14 to $16 billion market, but it is, no one else in the in the space is doing it. So that's the biggest thing. So everyone in the in the earbud space is using sexy artists to, to be their ambassadors of the brand, a music artist or or athletes who are listening to music to be the ambassadors of the brands. We've sort of flipped that completely on its head. And we say, you know, so the Chloe's or the Malcolm Gladwell's of the world, that brain and that what they're doing for for your for your inner game you know, is what is what we're all about. And so we call the, we call you guys our sexy ambassadors, right? Where it's not about what you look like or anything, it's, but it's about what you can deliver for me. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Do you want more traffic to your online store and to increase your sales? Yoast SEO, the most used SEO tool in the world, is here to help you do just that. It's your personal coach for writing product descriptions that rank high in the search engines. And it takes care of your technical SEO automatically. With Yoast SEO installed on your Shopify or WooCommerce site, you will increase your chances on rich results, quickly optimize your meta tags and beat your competitors. I use Yoast to improve the SEO across all our websites. And you can join me now and install Yoast SEO for Shopify or WooCommerce today. Just go to ecmp.info forward slash Yoast to sign up. That's ecmp for e-commerce master plan dot info forward slash Y-O-A-S-T. So ecmp.info forward slash Y-O-A-S-T. Okay, everyone, I have an awesome piece of tech to tell you about. Do you want to maximise your margin on Black Friday? Well, yes, obviously you do. So you should be deploying Nibble. Nibble is a super cool AI negotiation chatbot that you can use to squeeze every last bit of margin out of your Black Friday sales. Use it now to convert, I'm going to wait until Black Friday, customers today. Use it alongside your Black Friday activity to ensure you get the conversion. Visit ecmp.info forward slash nibble to have a chat with nibble yourself and see it in action. That's ecmp.info forward slash n-i-double-b-l-e. They've been seeing margin savings of 27% for existing clients and have free trials available on all their plans. And there's still time to get it up and running to help you improve Black Friday margins and help turn your overstocks back into cash. Try it yourself at ecmp.info forward slash nibble, then click the pricing or get in touch tabs to improve your margins now. It's time, it's time for the top tips round. Okay, I love this section because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas for taking our businesses to the next level. So Shay, are you ready for the top tips? Yes. Okay, the book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? And actually, let's reframe it, especially for your episode. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and listen to an audio book on their butterfly earbuds, which book would you recommend? Okay, well, if you haven't heard, I mean, I love 
audiobooks and podcasts. I love learning from them. And so I listen to a billion. So it's really hard to narrow it down. I said the top two that came to my head is Creativity by Ed Catmull. He is, um, he ran Pixar and uh, is just an incredibly smart in both culture, creativity, stimulating a sustainable business and motivating people to do their best. So I think that's one, a really important one. The other one is, and I'm a, I love history. So there's nothing better than, than going on a long, beautiful hike or at least I ski a ton. So it's going on a cross country ski and listening to history book. But I do think that leadership by um, Doris Kearns Goodwin is one of the best books in that it has, it's the juxtaposition between four U.S. presidents and incredibly different leadership styles and what was effective and what was not. And it helps me pick through that to see what works best for my style. Um, so if, if you're starting a business, I would say start with those. They're inspirational and just incredibly interesting. Oh, excellent. I like this. I haven't come across that leadership one. I'm going to have to go and have, a, have to dig that one out. Okay. The traffic top tip, which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? So I've never seen one marketing channel perform better than any, you know, with, with better than a mix of marketing. Even when you have a small budget, it's good to have a little bit of a mix. So however, I mean, the ones that are going to do give you the biggest bang for the buck, but will take a while our PR, that's huge. Getting picked up in a big space that has lots of viewership, that's huge. Today's world, there's a lot of influencers. I mean, we all know like the Oprah's best things or whatever her, you know, that the, that kind of influencer marketing is really big and happens quickly. But if you're gonna grow your brand and learn as much as you can, I mean, digital, Facebook, and Instagram, all the social, TikTok, all those guys, have huge potential for learning, which is going to be really important as you grow. So, I mean, I guess I named everything, but <laughs> <laughs> again, mix is what it's all about. And then ultimately, ultimately, I would say work on creating a relationship with your customers so that you have emails and SMS that are actually valuable to you because that's what makes your CPA go down quickly. Um, so just really work hard on that so that you're connecting to your users. Yeah, I, I love that advice. Okay, the tool top tip, maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plugin, a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? So I think a lot of those productivity tools are coming out. I mean, we're using Asana and Slack. And then for investor management, I use Streak, which has been incredibly helpful. Um, so there is a lot of tools out there that you can use. So we've been building, because we, we are looking to wholly focus on our user experience. We've been building a, the first of its kind SaaS platform on the earbud, which is different than anything on the market in that we're giving, producing a go to mark, I mean, on the go productivity tool. So it essentially the use case is you're riding your bike, you're listening to a podcast, you hear a cool quote or an interesting fact you want to save. Right now the use case is people like stop, rewind, write it down, stop, rewind, write it down, stop, and then never go back to it, right? So we have created an experience where you can activate our earbuds, swipe them, voice activate. We'll record the last 20 seconds and the next 20 seconds of what you're listening to it. Translate that to text and then add the metadata. So who the podcaster is, the author, what the platform is, Spotify, Audible, whatever the platform is, and then watermark it butterflies. But it will be stored in your butterflies portfolio so that you can do anything you want with it, um, much like Evernote. So, and you know, one of the best things that, that and most exciting things is like you're having a walking meeting or in the car, you can actually pull the, the snippets of the action items out and then it will be recapped for you in your butterflies portfolio. Um, and that will, then you can just send a recap right away and not have to go back and re-record, you know, listen to the whole podcast, I mean, the meeting or listen to the whole Zoom call. That is um, genius. I can I can hear millions of podcast sponsors all around around the world going. We need that. We need them to do it. So they then take action. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Is like for you guys, it would people will be sharing sharing it on social and Instagram, and that's why it's so important for us to have the metadata associated with it. You can't use that snippet of information without that metadata connected to it. 
No, that is uh, that is very, very clever. Uh, OK, the growth top tip, because come on, Chloe, we're supposed to be doing the top tips here. Uh, the growth top tip, if you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business from 100 orders per month to 1,000, what would be your number one tip for them? Positioning your brand, I think, to have an emotional connection and actually identifying with a group of people. That a lot of times is going to mean you're going to have to have that rub. So you are all about one thing means you're not about something else, which I think is scary for business owners because you don't want to isolate anyone. But really defining that positioning so that you're connecting with your users. And then again, probably PR or get that out there to someone who has a big group quick if you're going for it from 100 to 1000. I love that. I love the consistency through everything we've been talking about. You know, it's get that customer group nailed and then everything else flows from that. Well, look, um, Shay, it has been an utter pleasure uh, chatting to you. Uh, Before we say goodbye, could you please let the listeners know where they can find you and your business? So you guys can find us in butterflies.com, B-U-D, no T's, E-R-F-L-Y-S.com. And also, if you don't want to buy our earbuds, we also... Because our team loves it, we've been making recommendations internally forever on best podcasts, best audiobooks. Um, we send out a quick five-second email or SMS every week on our top recommendations, which has wildly taken off more so than our than sales. Um, so if you want to join that, just get to know us. That's a good way to do it. Cool, excellent. So uh, can we just can you just spell out the URL one more time, please? Butterfly. So B U D E R. F-L-Y-S.com. Perfect. Shay, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Um, It's been fascinating chatting to you both about the product and about how you're building the business. I can't wait to see what comes next for you guys. I think it's going to be super exciting. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks for your podcast. I listen to it all the time and I really appreciate it. It's incredibly helpful. Awesome. Thank you. What a fascinating lady. What a fascinating business as well. That's one of those ones that's got my brain firing off with all kinds of crazy ass marketing ideas. Um, I think for me, the real big takeaway is that impressive. I think it's why my brain is now firing with a million and one ideas is that she's so focused on who that core target customer is so focused, understands them and the marketplace so well. I think it's it's really inspiring. And I think it just creates so much opportunity when you have that level of clarity about who the product is going to be great for. And clearly a very cool product. I will be, uh, I, I am going to be getting one when they're available for, for shipping to the UK. Now, to get your hands on the notes from today's show, including the top tips and links to what we've mentioned, head over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast or use our new special direct to episode links. Just put ecmp.info forward slash episode number into the URL bar and you'll go straight to the correct episode page. Once you get to the website, you can also add yourself to our email list so you don't miss out on any of the other things I share to help you improve your business. Thank you so much for tuning into this and every episode that you do of the e-commerce master plan podcast. I bring you a new interview every week because I want to inspire and help e-commerce business owners like you and like Shay to succeed and thrive with their businesses, including progressing along the path to net zero. So if you know someone this show can help, please tell them to listen to the e-commerce master plan podcast. I hope you have an excellent week and don't forget to keep optimizing. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast. If you're marketing an e-commerce brand, you already know that data changes everything. More data means more power. And if your email or SMS tools can't handle all that data, they're probably holding you back. That's where Klaviyo comes in. Its top-notch personalization and segmentation help you send the right message at the right time, guided by unlimited real-time data from your online store and tech stack. Request a demo at klaviyo.com forward slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan.